Hey, good like evening, everyone. Welcome to the CollegeWise Virtual College Fair. Um, we're going to wait just another minute or so, let all the students find their way into the room, and then we'll get started. Okay, I think we will go ahead and get started. So again, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the CollegeWise Virtual College Fair. We're excited that you're here. We have a great group of colleges and universities and presenters lined up for you this evening. So excited to um, hopefully help you a little bit with your college search process. A few housekeeping announcements from me before we get started. First, um, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. If for some reason that changes, just send us a message using that Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Speaking of the Q&A button, that's really your best way to engage with our presenters this evening. So as you have questions throughout the session, feel free to submit those using that Q&A button. Um, you're welcome to ask them to individual colleges throughout the session. Um, either before they're presenting, while they're presenting, or after is totally fine. Um, or you're welcome to ask general questions that you would like everyone to chime in on. We'll be monitoring those kind of behind the scenes all throughout the session. So feel free to fire away whenever you think of your question. Um, don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered this week. So be sure to check the StriveScan website, sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in, um, as well as find all the recordings there within about a week or so. So before I turn it over, I just want to show you what our agenda looks like tonight. We're the bottom left hand corner of the screen, session C6. So tonight we're going to hear from Lewis and Clark College, Linfield University, University of Portland, Oregon State University, Willamette University, and Pacific University, Oregon. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jack to, sorry, Jeremy with Lewis and Clark College. Uh, hi there, everyone. Just give me a moment to get my screen share set up. Um, and hopefully you all can see that. Um, um, thanks for joining me uh, to learn a little bit more about Lewis and Clark. My name is Jeremy Jackson, and I am an admissions counselor with Lewis and Clark. I primarily- hey, Jeremy, I'm sorry, we're, we're seeing your Word document right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Didn't work. OK, sorry. You're OK. Uh, Okay, can you all see the the uh, the PowerPoint now? Yeah, we're on the PowerPoint right now. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. If you separate your tabs and put the Word document in a separate browser window, it should let you share just the. Okay. Well, I will just uh, move forward without my notes. Okay. There. <laughs> Um, I'll just talk a little bit about uh, Lewis and Clark um, from academics and liberal arts standpoint. We're a small liberal arts college located in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we have currently um, a little less than two, uh, 2,000 undergraduate students. The average class size is 17. Student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1. Uh, we do follow a pretty traditional thirds model to um, academics. Uh, being a liberal arts institution, our main focus is making sure that students are as well-rounded as possible by the time they leave Lewis and Clark. So one third of all the courses you would take would be specific to general education classes. One third would be specific to uh, your chosen major or academic interest. And then the last third would be specific or totally elective based. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to have time to go through all of this, but the last thing I'll touch on is our 456 commitment. The four part to that is our commitment to making sure that students are able to graduate in four years. So, um, <clears throat> so much so that if for some reason you're taking 14 to 15, 16 credit hours a semester, um, you're doing well in your classes and for some reason you need to stay an extra semester to complete your degree then we will incur the cost of that the five part to that commitment is an agreement with our um, school of education and counseling to say that you could complete your bachelor's degree in just four years and then move on to our graduate campus and complete your MET or masters of arts in teaching in, in just one year and then the sixth part to that commitment is an agreement with our law school to say that students could actually complete their bachelor's in three years and then move on and complete um, their JD Juris Doctorate in another uh, three years there at the law school. Um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and move forward and talk a little bit about our community. 
My favorite thing about being at Lewis and Clark is that we have student representation from all over the US and all over the world. As you can see, we have students from 47 different states here in the US, 60 different nationalities between 10 and 15% of our student body are students from outside of the US. So I always like to ask prospective students like yourself to envision yourself on a campus in classrooms where students are there from all over the world, all over the US and how that could enrich your educational experience. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions we get often is because Lewis and Clark is such a small college, what is there for students to do? Very valid question, um, but a lot of people are very surprised to learn that we have over 100 clubs and organizations for students to be a part of. I would implore you all to go online and look into the different clubs and organizations that we currently offer, see which ones stick out to you. Um, in relation to our community, we realize that a big reason why so many students are interested in coming to Lewis and Clark is our location. Our students and our alumni uh, often say that we kind of have the best of both worlds in that where we're located in Portland is on the southwest side of Portland, right on the edge of Tryon Creek State Park. Um, literally, campus is carved out of the middle of a forest. So it's very serene, green, beautiful campus. So sometimes you have to kind of step back and say, wait a minute, I'm still in the city of Portland. And yes, we are, and our students are still able to enjoy all of the wonderful fun things there are to do within a city like Portland. I consider a Portland a hub music, the arts, um, food. Food is a big part of Portland culture. So our students take advantage of those things, but also they have ready access to internships, volunteer or job oriented opportunities. Um, it's also very easy for students to get off campus <clears throat> uh, via the Pioneer Express or our zip car program or a lot of students even bike to and from campus. We also consider ourselves a residential campus. We do require students to live on campus for four semesters. Um, outside of that, uh, I'll move forward and talk a little bit more about our um, the Pacific Northwest. Um, as I said, we are uh, right on the edge of Tryon Creek State Park, but our, our students enjoy the outdoors in many ways. Um, it's another big reason why so many students choose to come to Lewis and Clark. As you can see here, you know, we're very close to um, all kinds of outdoor excursions, mountains, oceans. Um, we even have a college outdoors program that is specifically designed to help students gain access to the Pacific Northwest and outdoor activities. It could be something as simple as foraging for mushrooms or other vegetation or something a little more complex like learning how to deep sea kayak along the San Juan Islands in Washington State. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about our global focus. One of my favorite things again about Lewis and Clark is the way in which professors are committed to making sure that students are having discussions about our global community. As a campus, we're just committed to making sure that we're being more inclusive of our global community in general. An extension of this are our overseas programs. We currently have over uh, 35 different programs. Our alumni describe their experiences overseas as transformative. And about 82% of them, as you can see, said that their overseas experience led to uh, what they chose to go into after leaving Lewis and Clark, whether it was associated with their major or not. <clears throat> so I would highly implore you all, if you haven't thought about studying overseas while in college, do so and look into the different opportunities that Lewis and Clark offers because there's some really cool places to go and to totally immerse yourself in another culture. And I am running out of time very quickly. Um, talk about admissions and financial aid. I'll just say uh, three things. One, um, we are a common app institution. Um, for those seniors, go ahead and get that submitted pretty quickly. Two, we are a test optional institution, so you don't have to submit SAT or ACT scores if you don't want to. Um, and I'll go ahead and leave it there. Um, again, thank you for your time. Um, I'm happy to help you all uh, with the admissions or financial aid process after today, if need be. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. OK, if you have questions for Jeremy or any of our other presenters, feel free to start submitting those using the Q&A button. Next up, we are going to go to Linfield University.
Good evening. My name is Patrick Wilson. I serve as the Senior Associate Director of Admission here at Linfield University. And um, we'll walk through here. Uh, so we have two campuses, actually. Our main campus is located in McMinnville, um, uh, which is just an hour southwest of Portland, right in the heart of Willamette Valley wine country. Mac has about 33,000 residents, and it's a really nice sized community to, to go to college in. Uh, 189 acres um, with just 1,400 students, about 19 states and countries represented each. 85% uh, of our classes are fewer than 22 students, so certainly a small um, personalized education throughout those four years. Um, and 34% uh, of our students identify as non-Caucasian, were technically the most diverse liberal arts college in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, another 30% of our students are first generation. Uh, we do, uh, we did change from Linfield College to Linfield University this year. Um, we're now offering graduate programs and have reorganized the institution. So we now have a College of Arts and Sciences that hosts 43 majors. Some of our most popular are listed here and include things like psychology, education, exercise science, and the sciences. And then we also have a full school of business with seven different majors, including two of our newest programs. Um, interdisciplinary majors in sport management and wine studies. So certainly taking advantage of the Pacific Northwest and our location uh, near Portland. Uh, and then secondly, we have a campus right in Portland uh, and we're actually going to be moving uh, our Portland campus from Northwest Portland to Northeast Portland. It's a new 20 acre campus that will open this spring. We actually had an update today uh, with some photos, construction's almost done, which is very exciting. And that'll be home to the Linfield Good Samaritan School of Nursing, which is one of the oldest nursing education programs in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, nursing at Linfield is a non-competitive entrance for students who will spend all four years and complete their prerequisites uh, and is um, a successful program overall with more than 90% of students passing their licensure exam uh, in the first pass. Just about 15 minutes to downtown, so certainly for students doing all four years, uh, two years in MAC, two years in Portland, kind of the best of both worlds there. Um, Linfield is also a liberal arts institution, um, and uh, so we do consider a Linfield education to be deep and broad um, with the depth coming from your major. <clears throat> um, the nice thing about the way that our curriculum is structured and uh, is that you're going to pick the classes that fulfill each of these requirements. And so we really do hope that students not only get the breadth of understanding connections between different subject matter, but also the opportunity to explore options and determine which path it is that a student would move forward with. So you've got about a year and a half um, from your first semester to really identify which area you would wanna pursue. Um, about 80% of our students are doing an internship or some other form of uh, hands-on research. Uh, we think that hands-on learning is really important. So some of our student faculty collaborative research that occurred this summer include some of these projects that certainly come from the sciences like chemistry here, one of our chem professors working with a student, but also non-science specific areas such as in our exercise science and healthy human performance political science, uh, psychology and, and communications training and, and theater as well. Um, but those are all opportunities for students to do paid research, really work with their faculty, have their name written on those projects, those posters, those papers that's, that faculty are publishing. Another form of hands-on learning that we think is really important is through study abroad. More than 40% of students are going abroad before they graduate. And we think it's so important that we do pay for the first free round trip airfare. Uh, in addition to the 33 sites in 15 countries that are listed here, these are all our programs. We've already done the hard work to establish relationships with institutions overseas, understand what kinds of classes uh, you're taking, ensure you have a high quality experience that likens to that you've had at Linfield, and then also um, provide that opportunity for you to transfer those courses back. Uh, we also do typically offer a January term for four weeks during that month for students to study abroad as well. Uh, unfortunately, those classes have um, will not be going this year, but usually about five to seven of those. Um, our, in terms of campus experience, these students were doing some tie-dye at orientation this year, um, but we do have a very active Associated Students of Linfield University, a completely separate 501c3 uh, organization from the institution. So that's really a great leadership opportunity for our students. They will work with the Wildcat Events Board, so there's always something going on in clubs and organizations, performing arts groups. 
Um, again, lots of leadership positions, intramural sports, outdoor rec, of course, taking advantage of our location just an hour from the coast. Most of our students are living on campus all three or all four years. Um, 15 residence halls with a variety of different options there, including our pet friendly residence hall. So if you'd like to bring your small pet, you can do so. Um, and then we also have on campus apartments. So once students get into their junior and senior year, you stay on campus, still right with your friends um, and still just a, a quick five or 10 minute walk from most uh, events on campus. We do have uh, NCAA Division Three athletics, 11 women's teams, 10 men's teams. Um, football is one of our most successful programs. They have 64 consecutive winning seasons, which is more than any other college in the country. Uh, also on the common application, like many institutions, um, we are not using test scores any longer as part of the admission scholarship or financial aid process. So no test scores are required nor used. Um, we also don't have an application fee. Early actions right around the corner. Uh, we'll have our virtual scholarship and visit weekend program in February, up to $5,000 more through that program. Um, financial aid, more than uh, $40,000 on the average package, almost all of our students receiving some. So certainly an opportunity to bring that cost down. We're doing visits and we welcome students to visit uh, with a prearranged appointment. So thank you very much. And I see I've got a couple questions perhaps, so I'll get those answered. Awesome, thanks Patrick. Okay, next up we are going to the University of Portland. Hello, my name is Martin Williams. I am the Associate Director of uh, Admissions at the University of Portland. I'm trying to find my screen share and there it is. Boom. All right, let's do this. I'll be your host with the most regarding University of Portland. Uh, what you need to know about UP is that we're a small, private, Catholic, liberal arts teaching university. So we're the only Catholic university in the state of Oregon. We are associated with the Congregation of Holy Cross, same folks that run Notre Dame. And what the Holy Crossers believe in is the uh, quits essential liberal arts education. We want our students well-rounded, well-read, well-spoken. We want them more intelligent, intellectually curious. This is what we call holistic learning that encourages the full formation of the individual and their worldviews. We want you to come away from this experience with a sense of moral and ethical responsibility to the world, showing compassion towards your fellow man, and uh, basically, being smart enough to be that really smart voter when it's time for you to get into the voting polls. We're relatively small, uh, for just under 4,000 undergrad students. Average class size is 25, no huge auditorium classrooms. 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, that means you have access. You have access to the people who teach you. You have access to people that can advise you. As a teaching university, we have no TAs, no grad assistants, all of our professors teach their own lecture courses. We have five different colleges. We have the College of Arts and Sciences and then accredited schools of business, education, direct entry nursing program, as well as an engineering program. What is key for the education at University of Portland is the advising. Every student gets an advisor right from the get-go. So someone that you can turn to to ask questions about uh, your education, your discipline. We go to great lengths to cater to the individual. So that means students are understanding uh, what electives are available to them inside their major, outside the major. Can they get a minor? Can they double major? Can they go study abroad? The key is ensuring that everyone has access to someone that can help them out, but also ensure that they will get out in four years. We don't need you here longer than those four years and neither do your parents. What I think you, University of Portland does, uh, as well as any other schools, we help our students attain the professional opportunities, help you gain those uh, uh, experiences that go beyond the theoretical, go beyond the classroom. Internships is the most popular option. We have an internship coordinator in the arts and sciences, in the schools of business and engineering. Uh, you'll be placed in classrooms as an education major. You'll be in clinicals as a nursing major. Uh, we also offer advising for what we call the pre-professional programs. So students interested in going into medicine, physical therapy, law, occupational therapy, 
so on and so forth. And the way I structure these presentations now is I try to go beyond the facts and figures and give uh, you as prospective students and parents uh, an understanding of why these experiences are so important. Uh, the engineering program has a number of different great internship opportunities. Uh, you could stay in the state, you could go out of state, uh, you could do a formal co-op program, you could do something a little bit more informal. Uh, in case you aren't aware, Portland, Oregon is known as the Silicon Forest. High tech is one of the leading industries in the Portland area. And our, so our computer science, engineering, uh, electrical engineering majors are getting great opportunities for internships, which hopefully turn into jobs. Uh, research is a big uh, focus for our students, especially in the STEM areas. Uh, being able to put something down on the resume is so key. The School of Business requires the internship. And with a booming market like Portland, Oregon, you got great companies like Nike and Adidas and the Portland Trailblazers uh, being able to offer our students some great work experiences. Some students do go beyond the Portland area. Some will go up to Seattle or maybe back down to the Bay Area. Some of our students will gain experiences outside of the United States. For instance, our School of Engineering has a program every summer which they go to a developing country to help on a project or fix medical equipment. Uh, we even have a business major that did a, an internship in Africa, in India, I'm sorry. We have professors who will take students on excursions that are abroad, uh, including this uh, undergraduate research expedition on a uh, historical site in Spain. Going abroad doesn't necessarily mean going overseas. Our political science majors can go study in Washington, D.C., where they will have an opportunity to get an internship and do research. And this looks great on a resume. Uh, again, in the STEM areas, research is a big, big deal. Um, as you can see, we have uh, the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Awards where our students are going to great institutions like MIT, University of Michigan, University of Colorado, uh, University of Chicago. These are all top tiered programs that are accepting our students and giving NSF graduate awards to. These experiences will last you a lifetime on your resume. Being able to work with CNN, uh, with uh, ESPN or Nike, uh, being a New York Times uh, journalist. And then, of course, the grad school opportunities are terrific as well. Uh, I don't want to bore you all too, too much. But again, I just want to emphasize that the, uh, the small school experience allows our students to get personal attention, uh, good advising, and then access to great professional experiences. Um, and this is just an example of the pre-med uh, success that we've had. So with that, I will turn it back over to our host, uh, Tyler. Uh, thank you very much for your time and consideration, and I look forward to hearing from you all very soon. Great. Thank you, Martin. Okay, next up, we are going to Oregon State University. Awesome. Thanks so much uh, for being here tonight with us, everyone. And I'm really excited to share more with you about Beaver Nation. My name is Delta Lee. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. And I am one of OSU's non-resident advisors. Um, so here we go, learning a bit more about Beaver Nation. We are an institution that is out there. And what that means for us is that we are pushing the envelope with academic discovery and believe our undergraduate students should be out there as well. Um, so regardless of what program you go into, you will be highly encouraged or sometimes required to have hands-on experiential learning opportunities. Um, these may include specialized internships, such as our MECAP program for our engineering students, where you apply to get two paid six-month internships before you graduate. 
Um, this might be travel study, uh, where we're managing over 200 travel abroad programs in over 70 countries, or it might be undergraduate research. And we do have over 2,000 undergrads doing research every year, with some of them presenting at our annual undergraduate research symposium. Uh, the background of this slide is actually a really great example. This is a student working at our coastal campus called the Hatfield Marine Science Center, um, where we have students going out in their undergraduate years to get real world experience on research vessels or doing research um, with other national organizations on this campus, such as the US Coast Guard and NOAA, uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. Um, so we want to get you out there because we know that hands-on experience is super crucial to be successful um, for wherever you land after Beaver Nation. And the reason we're able to do that is because we are one of two universities in the United States that has all four federal research grant designations. Um, like I said, those opportunities do persist across the board and we do have over 200 academic programs to choose from. Um, for us, once you're admitted to the university, you're admitted to all of our programs. Um, so we do love when students explore and uh, try to find where their academic passions take them. And you do have a lot to offer when it comes to that exploration. Um, if you're not quite sure what you want to study yet, uh, you might want to consider our specialized program as a university exploratory study student, um, where you are able to explore those majors for about four quarters, as we're quarter school, before you select your home program. Um, the majority of these students find their home major and don't switch after that and really can plug into whatever that passion is. Um, but on the right hand side, we have our academic colleges under which those majors fall. So you can start to see a bit more about what we are offering. Uh, when it comes to popular programs, we do have a very popular uh, College of Engineering where we're offering 15 accredited engineering majors, um, things like you've seen before, like mechanical and industrial engineering, as well as some more unique programs like forestry and nuclear engineering as well. Um, students don't only get out of the classroom and the aforementioned opportunities, um, sometimes they're getting out there just in their clubs and orgs with a popular club in the College of Engineering being our Leadership Academy, where students learn soft skills like mingling and networking and building their resume alongside the hard skills they're getting in the classroom. Um, some of the other popular programs include our pre-professional programs. So we do have a very strong program in pre-vet um, with students getting a really awesome preview of those next steps with the Carlson College of Veterinary Medicine on our campus. Um, so we are the only uh, university in Oregon that has a graduate college of vet med right on our campus. And again, students are able to get that really exciting preview through shadowing opportunities in their senior year and other things as well. Um, and then the last that's a pretty popular for, for us is the College of Business, where all students in their first year are taking a course called Be Engaged, where they're tasked with creating or supporting a real world entrepreneurship initiative. Um, and that means that we have students making businesses their first year. Um, so like you can see, those opportunities do persist across the board and we definitely wanna get you out there into the field to help you understand where you might be going um, or help you kind of guide you if you're not quite sure yet. Some other specialty programs that we have include our Honors College. So we do have students in small seminar courses throughout their four years with the Honors Program, um, as well as earning their own Honors College degree throughout Honors through a senior thesis capstone project. So if you're looking to plug in to get more experience, especially if you're trying to go to graduate school after, um, this might be a really great support system for you to do so. The majority of those uh, opportunities are offered on our Corvallis campus, which is our main campus at OSU. Uh, we are located 90 minutes south of Portland, 45 minutes in from the coast, um, right in the heart of the Willamette Valley, as you can see here with the Willamette River running right next to our town. Um, on that campus, we have just over 32,000 students. So we are a large institution, uh, but if you're looking for a smaller campus environment, you could definitely look into our sister campus called OSU Cascades. A uh, slightly different environment being located in Bend, Oregon with a small smaller student body, uh, but all of the great resources of us as uh, an institution. And um, as you can see here on the left hand side, we have a lot going on at that campus. So we have over 400 clubs and orgs, academic associations, like I've mentioned, all the way to non academic clubs, like our Corgi Appreciation Club, which I love, or our Hammocking Club. Um, we also have a very outdoorsy population who takes trips with our Adventure Leadership Institute, where students are perhaps getting credit in mountaineering or rock climbing or wilderness and first aid responder. Um, so even if you're getting out there in the outdoors, we got you covered with these opportunities. 
Um, and then last but not least, I wanted to share a bit more about the admissions process for us. So we are holistic review school. Um, and the main updates for us is that we are test optional moving forward for admissions and for scholarship review. So you are not required to send test scores in to us. Um, and then when it comes to scholarships, we are reviewing all eligible WUI State students for the Western Undergraduate Exchange or the WUI scholarship. Um, it will be competitive, but if you are awarded, you're going to get awards that allow you to have 150% of in-state tuition. And that's all I have for you tonight. Thanks so much for sharing some time with me. I really appreciate it. Go Beavs. Have a good night. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, next up, we are going to Willamette University with Sue. Hi, everybody. It's so fun to hear about all of my friends here in the Northwest. This is great. <laughs> um, welcome to Willamette. I'm Sue Corner. I'm the Director of Recruitment at Willamette University. I'm going to take the next six minutes just to tell you a little bit about our story um, and introduce you to a few of the things that make us unique. My hope is that this little tidbit will inspire you to want to spend more time with us um, through a more in-depth virtual or in-person visit. Um, Willamette is located in Salem, Oregon, the state capital. We're in the heart of the beautiful Willamette Valley. Um, we are a liberal arts college uh, supported by graduate programs in business, law, and theology. We're located in a part of the country that is really sought after for its natural beauty, diverse ecosystems, and outdoor opportunities, just like all of my colleagues have said. Willamette is the most historic institution um, in the Western United States. It was founded before Oregon was a state. And we began to educate and shape innovative leaders right from the beginning, including our very first alum, who was a woman, Emily York. As things like business, government, education, medicine, and social systems were being established in the Western United States, it really was Willamette alumni who were equipped with an education that allowed them to quickly make an impact on these industries as they literally grew up around us. I mention our history because it's important to understand our rich heritage in order to understand who we are as an institution now. Um, Willamette's legacy of leadership and impact in the community is exactly what current Willamette students find here. Um, we are a place that turns, takes knowledge and turns it into action. Um, our predecessors gave us a motto <laughs> that informs the current Willamette experience in a very real way. The motto that was established at our founding is not unto ourselves alone are we born or non nobis solum nati sumus. Um, <laughs> and I think um, our alumni knew from their time at Willamette just exactly what the motto sums up, that we are in this world together. Uh, and our education should be a time when we practice and explore how we will have an impact on others. So we talk about the motto a lot and continually challenge ourselves to live it in new and varied ways. Willamette does an exceptional job of providing students with occasions both in the classroom and out of the classroom to, to practice this idea of the motto and to make positive change through leadership, service, um, sorry, and innovation. <laughs> Uh, in the classroom, Willamette students meet in small groups where highly engaged faculty lead primarily discussion-based classes. These small groups are interactive and they're designed to help students really develop important skills that will see them through their lives and careers, skills like critical thinking, creative problem solving, and the ability to consider varied perspectives. Our faculty are accomplished academics, so they research and write and publish extensively, but first and foremost, they are teachers. Um, Willamette faculty serve as mentors who help our students really learn to learn so they can grow and change as the world around them changes. It's no wonder that Willamette has had more Oregon professors of the year than any other college in the state by quite a margin. Um, we feel strongly that the incredible classroom experience at Willamette is critically supported by experiential and co-curricular activities. Um, so things like study abroad, and hands-on research um, and internships. These are some of the interactive out-of-class experiences that all Willamette students participate in. 
Our unique location contributes significantly to our ability to provide these opportunities. So let me tell you just a little bit more about our place in the world. So Willamette is an urban campus set in the center of Salem's quaint downtown corridor. And we are the only campus in the nation that sits directly across the street, um, 76 feet to be exact from the state capitol building. So you can imagine the internship and research opportunities that abound for our students in everything from politics to economics to psychology and data science, simply because of our proximity to and our long relationship with state government. Also unique to our location is the positioning of Salem Health, one of um, Oregon's largest hospitals, which is directly adjacent to campus. Our threat pre-med program is well supported by our proximity to this medical resource. Um, Willamette also happens to own a 305 acre outdoor learning laboratory called Xena, where students can literally dig in the dirt of this very unique region. <laughs> they restore habitats, they participate in forestry study, uh, they even grow vegetables for our dining commons. Finally, um, Willamette is co-located with Tokyo International University of America and the American Studies program brings 100 Japanese students to live and learn in Salem with us every year. This program is a great reminder of Willamette's strong commitment to all things international. Um, we value the experiential learning that comes from the exchange students who share our campus, as well as the amazing opportunities that students find while participating in our 66 study abroad programs. So as you can see, Willamette is physically located in a way that we, um, we are li literally surrounded by opportunities for our students to extend their learning beyond. There's so much more to say, but before my six minutes are up, I just want to mention that Willamette uses the common application. We review applications holistically, and we've been fully test optional for several years. We never charge a fee to apply because we don't want that to be a barrier for any student seeking access to Willamette, and every applicant is considered for our generous financial aid awards. Willamette encourages applications from bright, diverse, prepared students who want to make an inner impact and interact with challenging ideas. So if you want to be part of the deep traditions and history that have made Willamette the shaper of innovative leaders, I hope you'll take time to learn more about us. Thanks for listening. Go Bearcats. Great. Thank you, Sue. Okay, next up, last but certainly not least, we have Pacific University, Oregon. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, coming and listening to us talk about our various colleges. And I'm going to pull up my uh, PowerPoint right now uh, so you guys can see it. Uh, come on, email, go away. There it is. Uh, it's not letting me pull it up full screen for some reason. Oh, there it is. Okay, um, like uh, a lot of the schools that went before me, we are located in the Pacific Northwest, just 26 miles west of Portland. Um, I'm also an alum of Pacific. I, gra I graduated from there in 2014. I loved it so much. I came back after uh, being away for three years doing various things uh, but you know that feeling that I got when I first stepped foot on campus and that community that I created did not go away when I left uh, when I left and it was waiting for me when I came back which was really really great for me to experience and you know still experience on a daily basis so we're about 30 40 minutes away from Portland uh, we're about an hour away from the coast about two hours away from Mount Hood and then um like other schools in the area, we're, fifth, uh, we're very near the Silicon Forest. So Intel, Nike, uh, Xerox, all those companies are near us and our students are able to get experience uh, through internships there. Um, we're in Forest Grove, small town of about 26,000 people. Um, and you know we have plenty of restaurants near town. I actually just tried a new one for the first time three weeks ago, a uh, new little Italian place uh, right near Main Street, which is pretty good. And you know we have access to a lot of different um, uh, uh, venues of nature. So if you like hiking, kayaking, skiing, surfing, we have access to all of it. Um, some of the top programs that we're known for are uh, we're the health sciences. So we have graduate programs in uh, physical therapy, uh, physician's assistant, uh, psychology. We have one of the we have the third best optometry program in the nation. And 
Um, and so we do have a lot of experience in those uh, areas and we have a, a program specifically tailored for our health students to help them uh, apply to those graduate programs that they want to uh, they want to pursue and get in. We're also well known for our business program, uh, business major, as well as our education programs that we offer. Um, uh, we do, we are a small school, so we do offer uh, that, you know, one-on-one -on -one relationship with professors, just under 1900 undergrads. Our professors are going to know who you are. They still remember me, and I was away uh, three years and you know I had professors uh, coming up to me when I was walking around campus giving a tour and saying we're so happy you came back you, you know you're, you're not working with us as a peer and some of them I hadn't even taken a class with since I was a freshman and you know the fact that they still remembered who I was that they were happy that I had returned you know um, was going to be working with them just really reminded me of why I fell in love with the school in the first place and you know why I continue to love working here. Um, we also believe in getting our students ready for the workforce. So we like to say that you don't just leave with a, with a degree at Pacific, you leave with a resume. So, you know, our students uh, get hands-on experience as early as freshman year to uh, really try what, you know, try out different uh, fields that they might be interested in. And if they, you know, change their minds, that's okay. They can, they have time to try something else. But, um, it, you know, you can see the stats there on the field, but I was uh, definitely, I definitely fell in that camp. I knew as I was walking across that stage uh, in 2014 what the next step in my life was going to be. I knew college wasn't the end. And, you know, we work extremely hard to make sure that our students know what their next step in life is going to be, whether it's grad school, whether it's a job, uh, or whether it's, uh, whether it's an internship or, you know, hands on experience like Peace or AmeriCorps. Um, on top of that, our students are pretty involved. They are a part of uh, different uh, groups on campus, such as uh, student governments, different religious and ethnic groups. And um, our largest and most unique club is the Hawaii Club. 20% of our kids are from the state of Hawaii, and we throw the biggest luau on the mainland every year. You can look it up on YouTube. It is awesome. We go all out. It is our largest event on campus every single year. And you know, uh, you don't need to be from Hawaii to join Hawaii Club or to be a part of our luau. But most of our students, by the time they're seniors, are involved in three things outside of school, myself included. And I mean, it was a club that I got involved with that made me want to pursue education uh, as a career path. And so I'm very thankful for that because, you know, Pacific was a place where I got to try new things. I had, I had zero experience in student government uh, when I entered there. And now I'm the president of the staff government. And that's just because Pacific, you know, took a chance on me and said, hey, you can run for office. And, you know, if you run, we'll teach you how to do it. And uh, here I am all those years later, thankful for that chance that I was given when I was a student there. Um, we, like I said, we have plenty of outdoor interests, uh, various trips throughout the year, as well as a minor. So if that's something that you really want to pursue in the future, uh, we, you can get credit for going on an adventure. And, you know, eventually by the time you're a senior, you get to plan one of your own. Uh, you know, to pursue something that you really want to do or a certain location you really want to visit. Athletics is a very big part of our campus. About a third of our kids do a sport. So if that's something you're interested in, I, even if you're on defense about it, it doesn't hurt to ask and, you know, go through the process. Because uh, one of the great things about being a D3 school is you can always back out and say, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to focus on my studies or I want to do an internship or I want to go abroad. And that's perfectly okay. There's no contractual uh, commitment to being an athlete here. A little bit about uh, applying and scholarships. We offer these three types of awards at Pacific. Uh, these are all based on uh, merit uh, to the special interest and uh, talent awards, as well as the merit scholarships are based on what you've done right now. You can sign up for a senior preview day uh, by sending us an email and we can provide you the link for that. Like the other schools, we are on Common App. Uh, we don't require test scores. And so uh, our, our deadline uh, is coming up on November 1st. And if you need help, definitely reach out to us. Uh, my information is here. Thank you so much for coming. And I uh, really appreciate uh, you guys being here. Thanks. Great, thank you, Rudy.
Okay, to all of our students, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope you learned a little bit of information about these colleges that will be helpful with your college search. So when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind taking a minute to complete that for us, we really appreciate any feedback that you have. Also, don't forget to check the StriveScan website, sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as find all the video recordings there within about a week or so. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening and we'll see you soon.